Now then, my name is Ryan Central and today it's a bit of an interesting video. I sat down with Chris Brock who is one of the lead developers slash producers on a new Borderlands game. In this part of the interview we spoke about builds around certain characters and it really did show me some of the clever changes that are coming in with Borderlands 3 and those skill trees. The first question that I wanted to ask Chris though was around Flak, with them being incredibly popular, one of the more popular options in the game. And if there were any mistakes that he felt that people would make when playing Flak. I, I think this doesn't only apply to Flak, but I think that um, the previous Borderlands titles have really kind of trained people to stick to one skill tree. Like you stick to one tree, you kind of rush to the end of it, you get the skill at the end, and then if maybe at that point you'll branch into other trees. There's like more reason to kind of move between trees than there has been before. Like, um, example, I was talking with Paul earlier. Paul's our creative director. And the way he plays Flack is he likes to have the spider ant out to do a lot of tanking. But then he pretty much, so he equips that pet, but then he pretty much runs down the jabber tree to get more survivability, um, to make it so the spider ant can revive you, right? Because that's in the jabber tree. So like, I think that we really will encourage people to cross class more, you know, and just kind of uh, build their own spec and not necessarily just kind of run down one tree and commit. The good news also is if you don't like the way you've spec, like respecking is absolutely still a thing. Like that's the thing you can do pretty trivially, so. As somebody that's playing through as Krieg, it's just, it's the get released a beast. Now you can actually feel like now you're you playing the like, game, yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, we, we've tried we've tried to not have anybody who like they they just don't work until level whatever. We've tried to get away from that. Like one of the reasons we unlock your action skill at level two now is because like we know that the action skill really defines like your your character, right? So rather than make you wait like arbitrarily to level five. Cool, you leveled up, you're level two, have an action skill, right? That's, we wanted to make sure everyone was useful as fast as possible. What Chris said here really made something click in how the skill trees of the builds work in Borderlands 3, certainly in comparison to other games with skill trees like this, but also previous Borderlands titles. He mentioned there that you kind of want to dip into various talent trees, and I think for Flak especially, that is very much the case. Flak skill trees seem to coerce you into mixing and matching your pets, your abilities, and also the skills that you pick up. If we built a sniper build for Flak, you'll want talents in that hunter build, but you might want to have the skag pet, which increases your flak damage as a whole, and you might even want to spec into this tree to increase the strength of your passives to increase that damage. But for the stalker tree, it's the same with the ability. If you're running as a sniper, you'll maybe want to be running the fadeaway ability, which increases your crit damage by up to 200% if you spec it that way. So in short, if you want to run the ultimate damage with a sniper build, you'll want to spec into the hunter tree, run the master as pet and use the stalker ability and this was definitely something deliberate from gearbox compare that to krieg like i did in this video you can only really go down the mania tree until you get released the beast and that's where you can really start to play the vault hunter so the game is subtly trying to get you to dip into each of the skill trees for augments for abilities and especially for some of the talents there is another thing with the talents though one thing that I noticed from playing Flak very early game to about level 10 is the impact from even just some of the smallest talents, especially the Flak ones. If we look at all of the tier ones, you could start to see a trend. Leave no trace when you score a critical hit, there is a chance for one ammo to be added to your magazine, maxing out to 36%. Ferocity in the Master Trait increases your pet damage by up to 50%, which is ridiculous. And Persistence Hunter increases your gun damage and action skill duration, max out at 12% for your gun damage, and 45% for your action skill duration. Into the Stalker Tree, you can increase your max health by 30%, giving yourself 1.5% max health regen per second. Your Attack Command has a lower cooldown and increases damage. All of these are just the tier 1 talents that you can get, and with each point that you put into these, you feel that impact. Whether it's survivability, the damage that your pet does, you feel that every point matters. And like Chris says, this was intentional. I'm, I'm really glad you noticed that. Um, there are, we have a couple character designers back at the office, uh, Ben and Tommy, who I, I really genuinely believe have made our best skill trees. Like, spending a point now is more valuable than it's ever been, and like, there's a lot of hard choices in there. Like, I still don't know what my favorite spec is for a lot of characters. It's like, man, they're all pretty viable. Like, like the, just each thing you can do is like pretty impactful now. 
Compare this to Krieg, again, who has some really good tier 1 talents, especially if you're going into Mania, increasing your melee damage, but it feels like you don't really get to play the hero until level 30 when you get that really strong release the beast talent. That's where the game opens up for you and you have a lot more fun. Everything before that, you're just warming up to that playstyle, meaning that levels 1 to 30 for Krieg can be a little bit depressing, and it seems that that was deliberate from Gearbox making sure that wouldn't happen, making sure those early talents felt just as impactful as late game talents. Now that we've mentioned how Gearbox want you to dip into each of the talent trees on each of the heroes, I wondered if there were some other subtle changes that they've made to the talent tree in order to make it better. Hmm, that's interesting. Um, sometimes the thing that is the best is not obviously good. Like you'll read the description and you're like, well that sounds okay I guess, and then you try it and it's like busted, right? And I think it's important that like you can look at a skill description and be like, oh that sounds like it's going to be really helpful, and then you take that skill and it is, right? You know, like it's just making sure that like people people need to understand what's good and they need to understand it quickly, right? Like they don't, I don't know, people don't love that, I don't think people love the trial and error where like, oh this this innocuous thing that doesn't seem like any big deal. It turns out it's actually the best build in the game. Like, it would be cool if the best build in the game was actually the thing that sounded like the best build in the game, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, so. yeah. Go back onto Flak. They are one of the most popular Vault Hunters in the game by far. So I wondered how Chris would break down Flak's skill trees into certain playstyles or archetypes of players. As applied to Flak specifically, uh, you have kind of a, a stealth, I'm almost like a rogue kind of like tree, uh, where it's kind of about transferring aggro between you and your pet, coming out of stealth, doing a lot of damage. We've got one that's more tanky, we've got one that's more snipery, right? And like just kind of taken with all the characters, like kind of at large, it was important to us this time to make sure that each character could fulfill several roles, right? So, like, depending on how you build your character, you can kind of drive that build towards any number of different things. So making sure that all four characters all had multiple roles that didn't intrude on each other too much was a big challenge, but I think it's been worthwhile. I mean, like, there's a lot more variability than we've ever had before. And none of them feel like um, sort of Siren from Borderlands 2, where you, when you play in a group, you kind of have to play the healer role almost, right. where it's like you can only play that certain playstyle of instantly resin everybody. It feels that at least on the face of it, every, everything seems quite viable from yes. the gameplay that we yeah, played. Yeah, that, that was the goal, is like we want everything to be valid, right? We want, um, like you said, like there was sometimes like a correct spec, right, in previous titles. And like while it's hard to avoid there being one that is like mathematically better. Just like, optimal, yeah. Yeah, that we, we want to make sure that like uh, from a role perspective that like you can do what you need to do and not feel like you're like selling your team short, you know. We spoke a lot about Flak, of course, because they are very popular, but I wondered about Mozamara and Zane, the kind of crazy builds that Chris and the rest of Gearbox have been trying up themselves to just give us a little bit of inspiration going into the game. Uh, okay, so Moz has a, a passive, I believe it's in her Demolition Woman tree, um, where Critical hits can now, uh, sorry, explosions can now crit, right? That sounds, <laughs> that, that sounds, like it sounds good, but it's kind of innocuous, right? Um, that's a really big deal. Like there's, she has a whole tree about doing AOE crit damage, right? Like you can imagine when I say stuff like that, that sounds pretty good, right? Amara, like so Amara is a siren, right? So Amara can still do, uh, siren things like that elemental aspect is there some of like the crowds like the uh, the crowd control uh, party support some of that stuff that stuff's still there right but we also wanted her to be able to like get in and mix it up and like not feel like she had to be on the periphery so you can build Amara almost any any way you want to she's going to do a lot of damage any way you, you build her but you know that's you can do that in a variety of forms Zane is like kind of an office favorite like within the studio because um, he can equip two action skills at once, right? Like you can like you can opt to like get rid of your grenade for uh, a second action skill, and depending on which two you pick, uh, it, you play extremely differently. Like I'm a I'm a uh, droning clone. That's that's my particular build. I like the digit clone and the and the, the gremlin drone sentinel. Um, other people, like that barrier can do some really cool stuff. Yeah. Like that barrier, um, for as simple as it sounds, like 
it can act almost uh, almost like a totem. You know, uh, like a, it's like a beacon I can put down that, uh, cool, like now there's like, everyone on this thing like, because like it gives us like extra health, it gives us extra accuracy, it gives us, you know. So just, you can play him um, again almost any way you want, support, damage, any way, so. We kind of touched on the flax archetypes of how you could maybe play them. I wondered a similar answer for the rest of the Vault Hunters. What kind of player should be playing Moe's or Amara or Zayn? So it's interesting. I actually, I actually think of Amara as a more of a close range fighter personally. Like I, I like to play her with a, like an elemental shotgun, like a Malawan shotgun, um, and just really get in there and, and start mixing it up. Moe's, to me, is is better at, at a range. Like I always, I always like to have her with assault rifles and stuff. Like she's got a lot of stuff that can really support that. Like I like to jack up her grenade capacity. Like cause that's one of the things you can do. She can just have up to like. If you put the right skills in, you can have like nine, ten grenades, at, you know. And so, uh, building with grenades in mind, because it, just like we have crazy guns everywhere, we also have crazy grenades everywhere, right? So, like, being able to like throw ten grenades into a pile of enemies that will all like merv out and become other grenades that will all turn out to other grenades that will all generate cash, right? Like that's like a thing you can do now. Then we kind of touched on the crazy sniper build that you can run for flak. I wondered if there was anything that you could run with Zane that seemed overpowered and broken. Build. Uh, so yes, it, so yes and no. So Zane is about mobility, really. Like Zane's got a lot of bonuses that that trigger based on if you are moving and like how fast you're moving and stuff like that. So he's like a very mobile, uh, a mobile character. A flag is actually in some way the opposite. Like Flax got some abilities where like, cool, if I'm moving, I've got health regen, but if I'm standing still, I get plus damage, plus accuracy, right? So that's more of a sniper build, right? Like it's like, cool, I'm gonna move to my spot, I'm gonna set up, I'm gonna line up, I'm gonna do damage, I'm gonna move to my next spot. Uh, Zane really wants to be moving all the time. So I like to build him with like an SMG or like a pistol, it's just something that like I can use at like a variety of distances and ranges, specifically I can with dolls because a lot of times the dolls will have um, on their alt fire, they'll have, or mode switch, they'll have a mm -hmm. switch from like, 5x uh, AR uh, site to like 10x holographic site, you know, so like you can really kind of vary it up as far as like, I think about the game almost, as you can probably tell, almost entirely in terms of engagement distance, right? So I like being able to switch that, especially if I'm going to be moving around all the time. Another subtle thing that I noticed about the skill trees on the gameplay reveal actually a couple of months ago is there's no talents based around increasing your assault rifle damage, increasing your sniper rifle. It's all very vague in the terminology. To maybe avoid stuff like just having a melee build for Krieg, if you wanted to turn around and say, oh, I want to play as a sniper as Krieg, people would laugh you out and say, you can't do that. Now it feels that these skill trees are a lot more open and there might be certain elements coercing you into, say as Moe's running explosion damage with her demolition woman skill tree. There's nothing forcing you to play a playstyle, And this is what Chris had to say about that. Yeah, we, we want you to be able to like, look at that character, be like, oh, I bet that would be a good sniper character. And we want that to be true. But also we want them to be able to do something that would surprise you, right? Like you look at Flak and almost all of the marketing images with Flak, he's got a sniper rifle, right? So like, cool, yeah, Flak's clearly probably a pretty good sniper, right? However, uh, you know, you can also build him with a shotgun and just get like right up in there and start messing with people up. Like just standing still and then doing a bunch of shotgun pellets worth of damage, pretty good, right? Uh, there are, we want things to be able to surprise you as well. So these are some of the reasons, both from what I've understood and also what Chris Brock has said himself, of how Gearbox are trying to subtly, but in a very clever way, change how the skill trees work to give you more freedom, give you more impact, and not feel like it's forcing you to go down a certain tree as Maya to build her as a support, as Krieg with a melee build, Zero with a sniper. You're not just sitting in one skill tree to play them. In fact, the game wants you to mess around with all of them, mix and match certain talents and skills, that you're not just going for the bottom tier talent on each of the skill trees. But I hope you found this video insightful. Hopefully it gave you some inspiration on how to play your favorite Vault Hunter. Thanks again for watching. Subscribe for more Borderlands content if you'd like to see it. And until next time, take care. We'll see you then.